Okay everyone, I finished working the front uh, piece. I did it exactly like you do the um, back one here. I just started all my rows. Um, geez, I wonder why it's not high enough. Well, anyway, I did my rows and then until I did the one inch of uh, the almond color and that was four rows uh, of the single crochet. It might be a little bit different for you if you crochet a little differently. So here, what I'm going to do now then is that we're going to start, I ended on the wrong, wrong row or the wrong side. So here now we can go ahead and we're going to start shaping our shoulders. So we're going to shape each shoulder shape separately. Okay. So here we're going to chain one. We're going to turn our work. And then since I'm doing the small size, I'm going to single crochet in the next 26 stitches. If you're doing the large you crochet in the next 29, the large is it maybe doing the medium is 29 stitches. The large is 32. The one X is 35. And then the two X is 38 stitches. And then at the end of that, we're going to do two single crochets together. Meaning we do a decrease. Then you leave the remaining stitches unworked. So we're not going to go all the way across. So here then you're just going to get your yarn. You do your chain one, turn your work over. And now right now I'm on the right side of the work. And so here, for myself, I'm only going to do a single crochet in each of the next 26. And then you do the number that you were supposed to do. So here, let me get closer so you can see what I'm doing. So here I've chained one. I've turned my work over. That's my first stitch right there. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, do one single crochet in the next 25 stitches. And then at the end, I'm going to do a decrease. I'm going to do two single stitches, two single crochets together. So I'm going to do my uh, 26 stitches and then we'll come back and work the decrease together. Okay, I've done my 26 stitches. I'm so sorry. It seems like every time I do a video, my neighbor decides to mow his grass. So now here over the next two uh, stitches, I'm going to do a single crochet decrease. So I'm going to do two single crochet together. So here I'm going to go in. I'm not going to close it yet. Go into my next stitch, pull out. There's three stitches and then I'm going to pull to all three. So that's a decrease right there. And now I'm going to go in my next row. I'm going to do single uh, one chain. I'm going to turn my work over. And here, let me show you the instructions so you can follow along. Now it tells us to chain one. I already did that and I turned my work. I'm going to do single crochet two together, a decrease. And we're going to do a single crochet in every stitch across those 26. And you're going to do the number of stitches that you are um, uh, asked to do and basically that's just going to be there at um, to the end of your row here when you get to the end so here I'm going to go ahead and do a decrease I'm going to go into the next stitch go in pull out don't don't close it off go into the next stitch do the same thing now I have three little loops on my yarn on my hook there and now I'm just going to do one single crochet in each stitch to the end so go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and work our next stitch and it's going to start shaping that little um, part that goes there in the shoulders, okay? Okay, I've come to the end of the row here. So now it just tells me to chain one, turn my work over. Oh, excuse me, that's the wrong side, <laughs> wrong row. I'm going to chain one, turn my work over. I'm going to do one single crochet in every stitch across to the last two stitches. And then in the last two stitches, I'm going to do the decrease single crochet two together and I'll have 25 stitches in that row. If you're doing the large you'll have 28, excuse me the medium 28, the large 31, the 1x 34 and the 2x 37. So here then you just chain one, turn your work over and do one single crochet until you get to the last two. These last two stitches here one and two that's where my decrease is going to be. So I'm going to work my single crochets in those stitches and then we'll come back and work our decrease together. So let me just get that going. Okay, I've come to the end of the row and here's our my last two stitches. So I'm going to do a decrease there. I stick in my hook. There's one loop. Then go to the next stitch. There's my three loops and I pull them all there. So that's shaping that little front of the collar, the front of the chest, I guess. Now for the next stitch, the next row, excuse me, just tells me to chain one and uh, I'm going to 
single crochet in each stitch across. I'm going to repeat that until the back piece is the same length as uh, the front piece is the same length as the back and then I'm going to fasten off. The back had 16 rows so here's one two three four five six seven and this is going to be eight so then I'll have to do the um, uh, finish this the eighth row and then eight more so including this row it'll be nine rows that I'm going to repeat. I chained one. Oops, sorry guys, my neighbors, they're working on his yard. And so now I'm just going to do one single crochet. When I get to the end, I chain one, turn my work over until I have 16 of these rows. Yours might be a little bit different. It's going to be the number of rows that you had to get those four, the four inches in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all my rows and then I'll come back and then we'll work on the second shoulder. Okay, I finished my rows. And so here, that's where it ends up here. So, um, when you count your rows, I cut it a little bit longer because I want to be able to sew that tail in. So, if you... Okay, so then that would be the full 16 rows. So then, I'm going to turn this over this way. So the piece that we've completed has, is now on the right side. Um, and here is where our work starts. So, this is the right side of the work. And so now here, we're going to get our almond colored yarn ready to do the second shoulder section. So here's the first shoulder we just did that and so then here let me see if I could get closer so you could see now we're going to be on the right side right like I said we had start, this one we did on the end it there at the wrong side so here with the right side with the we're going to join B which is the almond collar with a slip stitch in the first stitch that's left on work following the first shoulder. So here is where we ended the first shoulder. So here was the first unworked stitch. So this is where we're going to join our yarn to work the second shoulder. It tells us to do a slip stitch, but I also I always find that it's easier to just make a slip loop here. And if you want to join it with a slip stitch, you can. So then here, I'm going to have this there ready. Then I can just pull it up and I'll be ready to go. Um, so I know that people do things a little bit different, but I just like to do things that, um, try to do a, show you ways that I think would make it easier for you. So here is the tail. I'm going to try to either sew it in, um, or, uh, work it into the, the project. Um, it might be better to sew it in since, um, this is going to be worn and washed. If it's just something like a little cushion or something, you're not going to see, it's not a big problem. So now here, our instructions tell us to, uh, chain one. And we're gonna, and then we're gonna do, um, beginning the same stitch. We're gonna do a single crochet two together, and then we're gonna do one single crochet in each stitch across. And we'll have, oops, let me see here. We're gonna chain one. We're gonna begin uh, in the same stitch. We're gonna do two single crochets together, single crochet in each stitch across, and that'll give us the 27 stitches for the small, 30 for the medium, 33 for the large, 36 for the one X, and 39 for the two X. So here then, since I've already joined there, I'm going to chain one, just like that. And then they want us to start our first stitch reduction in the same stitch where we just started. So then what you're going to do here, let me get a little bit closer so you could see clear. We're going to go into the same stitch here, go in there, pull out our yarn, two loops, go into the next stitch, pull out our stitch. There'll be three there, and we're going to pull through all three and that's going to give us the uh, decreased two single stitch together. I just noticed that I have so much clay. I've been working with clay and I it's hard to get it off of my fingers. I'm going to have to find an easier way to scrub them off. So here then I'm just going to um, single crochet one single crochet in every stitch all the way to the end because we started our decrease there. So I'm going to go all the way to the end and then we'll come and work uh, the next row together here. So just do one single crochet all the way across and here is our decrease there in the middle. Okay, I finished my row. So now my second row tells us to chain one, turn. We're going to single crochet in every stitch across to the last two stitches and in the last two stitches we're going to do the decrease. Single crochet two together and this gives us a stitch count. For the small you have 26, medium 29, large 32, 1x35 and 2x30 38 stitches. So here I'm just going to chain one, 
turn my work over. So basically we're just doing reverse shaping on this side. So here, always oh, start on your first stitch there. I'm going to do one single crochet all the way across and in the last two stitches I'm going to do a decrease. So I'm going to go work all the way across and then I'll come back and do the last the decrease here over this stitch and then this stitch, the last two stitches. Okay, come to the end here, the last two stitches. So here I'm going to do a decrease. I'm so sorry guys, those are not my dogs, they're my neighbor's dogs. So here I'll pull through all three. And now we're going to do a chain one. Our instructions say to chain one. And then we're going to do the single crochet together. Uh oh, I think he's playing with something. So here's going to be two single crochets together, then one single crochet all the way across. Then after that, we're just going to chain one and we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch until our piece measures the same as the first um, shoulder on the other side. So here is just the last decrease then. Here, you go into the first stitch, pull out, go into the next stitch, pull out, you'll have three. And then one single crochet in every stitch all the way across. Sorry guys, I don't think he's going to stop. He's got a hold of something there. Okay, I've done my last single crochet, so now you see that this middle section is shaped there. And then now here, all you do is repeat this, what I'm going to do, chain one, turn your work over, one single crochet and every stitch across. When you get to your last stitch right here, you chain one, turn over and keep repeating this. So I'm going to add nine more, nine more rows here because that will give me the whole 16, stitch, 16 rows that I need in order to have the same height as this. And then if you can see here, it has the shape there in the front, just like that little shape that your pattern is showing you right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just repeat this. Chain one, turn, one single crochet and every stitch across until I have all my needed rows. Then we'll come back and we'll start finishing it by seaming it together and doing our edging uh, stitches, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then we'll come back and work on um, getting this seamed up together. Okay, I have finished the rows. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the right sides together starting here at the shoulder and in the arm, arm hole side. So what I did here, remember when you finish, when you started that your beginning uh, right side, if you're your right handed, well, I had put a little marker. So this is the right side. So this is going to go in towards the other section here that I had marked with the right side. So both right sides are together. And you can see that they're the same length and everything. So I just use these little knit clips, but you could use a safety pin or you don't even have to use them if you don't want to. Um, these just kind of help hold everything in place. And so now, our instructions here tell us to that beginning at the armhole edge, we're going to seam the so shoulders. If you're doing the, sh um, the small size, you're going to seam it for four inches. Um, the medium is four inches and a quarter. The large is uh, four and a half. The one um, X is four and three quarters inches and then the two X is five inches. So then you're going to have um, the side seams um, at the, we're going to be leaving the extra um, areas here open. So what that means here, like right here, I put the clip to begin. This is the armhole side here. So this is the edge we're beginning. So from here for four inches and you're going to do it whichever your um, size is indicated there. So here from the beginning, let me move this little clip down so you can see, to four inches. So here's the start from there to here is going to be my last clip. And you could, you don't have to use clips if you don't want. Um, you use whatever, you want to use a little um, a safety pin, you could do that too. So I'm just going to leave this rest open here. That's not going to be clipped down. I mean sewn down and I'm going to sew a seam from here to there. I'm going to just, I usually sew, um, just get my blunt nose needle and I put the col matching color here. Okay. And so you can seam it whichever way you're comfortable with. I usually go from, you know, here from the middle out. So that's the stitch there that I need to start at. So I'm going to move my clip. Here is the stitch for the four inches. 
Let me see if I could get it closer so you could see. I'm going to go through both layers. That's really important. Go through there. And then once I get that there, I'm going to make a little knot just to start my seam. And this little seam, I'm going to hide it as I'm sewing. You could sew whichever way you are more comfortable with. I'm going to go just like a slip whip stitch. Going from this side, grabbing both loops here and then both loops there. Can you see that? See if I can get closer so you could see better. So I'm going through those. This little tail, I'm going to just sew it there. It's going to get caught inside. And then you can just go again right there. Now you move to the next seam, the next set of stitches there. I'm going to move that little tail just to get it out of the way for you. And just continue that way. Go to the next one. And you seam whichever way you are more comfortable with, okay? I think this is kind of easy because then you see where your seam was there, there. So then now the next one, I move into my next stitch. Going the same way, grabbing the two things there. And I'm going to pull it there. Let me move that little tail. Go into my next two. Can you see that? I've washed my hands like three or four times and I still can't get all of that little clay off. I'm going to have to buy some, maybe a different brush to brush my nails there. But using the clay is so much fun. So I'm just going to keep going till I get to the end. I hope I'm not boring you guys. But this is how I do it. That way I know that I'm staying even. Meaning that you want to make sure you're not like twisting or one edge is longer or and you might have to add more yarn. It depends on how good you are at estimating. I do used to do a lot of sewing, so I'm kind of a little bit better at kind of guessing how much string or yarn I need. So here I'm coming to the end. This is my last stitch right there where we started. So this one I can tie together just like that in my last seam. Make my little knot, and then these tails I could sew back into the garments. Just kind of just weave them in and out. And you could even go up and down if you want. It's totally up to you. Come back again. Just do it a few times, and then I could cut it off. And then I'm going to do that same thing with the other tail. Just like that. Oops. I guess it's not that clear. So now I'm going to cut this tail off and then I'll get this other tail, put it in my yarn, my yarn needle, and then sew this tail in. I'm trying to sew, I'm going to sew all the tails into the same color. And what I mean by that here, I'll show you what I mean there when I seam that side in, okay? So here, I'm going to go back. And you can go up and down if you want, but remember we're doing an edge here, so I don't want to sew there because I don't want to make it too thick and bulky for when I put in my uh, my stitches or the arm edging. I don't want it to show there. So here, this is just how I'm sewing it up. I thought I'm trying to keep this more focused. <laughs> I think the dog could, that neighbor's dog could see the light in my room and he knows I'm here because sometimes I'll go out there and give him treats so I think he's trying to get me to go <laughs> trying to get out there me to go out there and give him a milk bone or something so then I can cut this off so see this seam is sewn already let me move back so you can see what it looks like so that was the first one here on this side and then see how flat it how nice it is nice and flat when you open it the right side Look at how pretty that looks because we just went through both of those. So when you wear it, there's not a bulky, you know, like if you if you sew it the other way, it's like a bulky seam. This is nice and flat, just like that, nice and smooth. So now I'm going to sew this side, this other edge. Once I'm going to go ahead and measure my four inches. Let me get my little tape measure. And you sew the same, this end, the same way. So right here, I'm just going to put the clip in there for now. 
so I can show you what it would look like. And I want to measure it again to make sure it's the right distance from there to there is four inches. And um, I guess it's like, what is it? Uh, for me, it's a little bit like 10 and a half centimeters. So I'm going to sew this, um, this, section, this other shoulder the same way I seamed this one. And then we'll come back and then we'll start seaming um, um, some of the other, um, oh, I think we're going to do the, uh, the si side seams here. Okay, and then we'll do the side here, and I'll show you how I hide this tail, the blue into the blue, and the uh, cream, the but almond color into the almond. Okay, so I finished doing my shoulders here. Okay, and left the uh, remaining section open, just so the ones that need to be done there. And then on this side, now we're going to do the seam the sides. I've already seen one side, so you can see that you need to leave a section open. This is still the wrong side, so the right sides are in here. But if you see the way I seamed it, when you open it, it doesn't leave a big um, bulky seam because we're only grabbing, you know, a few of the seams there. So what we're going to do here, you can use a, um, if you don't have knit clips, you could use, uh, like I said, a safety pin. What you're going to do here is from the bottom part here, is that we're going to be leaving, it tells us here, our instructions tells us to leave six inches on the lower edge, um, uh, un, uh, unsewn for open for the slit. And then we're going to begin at the armhole edge and we're going to seam. Oh, excuse me, here, sorry, looking at the wrong side here. We're going to do the sides here. Side seam, we're going to begin at the whole armhole edge, leaving six inches open at the lower edge for the slit. So what that means here on here's the armhole edge. Remember when we did that little chain three or slip stitch three? We're gonna start our first stitch will be there. I just had this clipped. And then we're gonna seam all the way down. And you're gonna leave six inches here at the bottom open to form that slit. One of the things that's important to remember is that you wanna make sure you line up your rows. What do I mean by that? Let me open this up. So if you look at here, when I seamed it up, my rows are lining up. Here's one, two, three, four, and then at the beginning of the fifth row, for myself, yours might be different because your gauge might be a little different. So here for me is one, two, three, four, five. At the top of the fifth row, and you can see here, if we're gonna go all the way across, our rows are lining up. I'm gonna begin my first stitch here. Or you can stop at the start at the top either way but as I sew I'm making sure that these rows let me open it here so you can see what I'm saying that these rows here are lining up so when I sew here I'm going to begin here see how they're lining up I'm going to sew here just getting like one strand from each stitch and then I make sure that when I sew it it's lining up right there perfectly I don't want to sew and have one row like this. See how ugly that looks? Like you're stretched out or have it go either way. It needs to line up perfectly just like that as best as you can. And then when I clip them together, then I know these two are lining up. And that's how I'm going to line it up. Here's my yarn on my needle. I'm using, of course, make sure you use a matching color. You don't want that seam to show. So when you're going to do it, it's going to come nice and pretty, really perfect. So if I remove my clip, these are really stiff. My hands are really tired today, so that's not helping. So I'm starting here on that fifth row. Here is the fifth row as well, just like that. Let me get a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. So you want to make sure, see if you want to count again. Here's one, two, three, four, five at the top of the fifth. That's where we're starting my other piece. One, two, three, four, five. So I know that I'm lined up right there and my piece is going to be nice and matched up. So I'm going to go ahead and start here, leave a little tail, make a little knot, 
and then you could hide this tail as you sew okay or you could sew it in yourself when I'm gonna do this let me um, focus this better for you guys I don't have to go through the whole thing if I don't want to now I can just grab one strand one strand there of either side and pull through I'm going to do that twice, uh, one more time in that beginning stitch because that's usually where you have the most tension is in your first and last stitches. That's where the pressure builds up. So now here as I'm sewing, I want to make sure that my rows line up. See here? I don't want to sew this way. I want to make sure that this lines up. I always hold that little piece with my stitch, with my fingers. Then I'm just going to go here and grab a piece of this layer a chain of this layer and continue sewing that way all the way up just making sure always that I'm lined up I know that little tails in the way hopefully it's not confusing you that. and here when I'm coming there see I'm making sure see that my piece is lined up just like that So when I'm, let me get that little tail out of the way for you. Let me cut that off so it's not in the way anymore. And now I want to make sure this stitch and that stitch match just like that. See this stitch and this stitch so that when you sew it, they're lined up. And I'm going to continue that way all the way till I get to the top here. And you're going to do that on both edges see and that's why it kind of helps to have the little clips and or a safety pin and then this edge is done see just like that but if I open it up it lays nice and flat it's not going to be super bulky you can't really see the seam is right here but you can't really see it but you do see that all the rows are lining up perfectly so go ahead and sew up both of your sides and then we'll come back and do our little edging Okay, I finished doing all my seams. I have my openings here, the little slits on the bottom, the shoulders are seamed up, and so now you can see it's done. Now here, I already sewn this side in, but here is where I had added the color for the change, the yarn for the yarn change, and I had told you that this is still inside out. So what I like to do is um, sew in my tails when I'm making a garment that's going to be washed. Um, and so what I do here, let me see if I can get closer so you could see, is that I like to sew in the tails the light color to each corresponding color. So here then I would just go in here, move up, and then probably sew my tails on this side. Just weave it in and out to the middle of the yarn there. And it is going through the yarn, but it won't really show on the other side, just like that. It's pretty long, so I'll probably take a couple more stitches and then come back. And I am actually going through, you can't really see it, but like right there through that yarn. Some people say they don't do that, but sometimes I do. I'm going to keep going back. And if you want, you can go back the other direction a few more times. And then pull it out. It should stay in. When you wash it, tug it a little bit and then clip it there close to the work. So now you could see it's not going to show there. You can't really. There's, this one's from a little knot or something. I'll have to check that there. Hmm. Maybe I didn't tug it there. So here, I'll have to hide this little knot there. So here, then I just do the same thing with the other color. And then my tails will be all sewn in. Get that there. I'm trying to reach around the tripod here. And then this one, 
Now for this color, I'm going to go in probably to the next round here. And then I'm going to go up and down into the stitch here. To get away from that lighter color. And then just do it like this. There's really no rhyme and reason. You're just going in and out of stitches. And then once I've done that there, oops, I don't want that to get undone. I'll go ahead and move it back. And the reason I don't want to do it, the weaving along this edge, because we're going to do a little border right now, a little finishing those sleeves, so you don't want to have that bump there. So then we have this done there. So now, so here it tells us if you want to do, you can work one or more, two single crochets on the round two. Wait, I'm hedging. At the edge to shape the armhole from right side join. So here, you can do that if you want. So here, on the armhole edging, we're going to chain one. You're going to um. And you're going to do a single crochet evenly around the armhole edging and you're going to slip stitch with the first uh, single crochet. So here it tells us that if you want, you could do more than one, you know, two single crochets. That's if you feel like this is too big, this space. So you might want to try it on first to see how it fits you. Before I start working on that edging, I'm going to turn my piece inside out, okay? So this is still the wrong side of the work. Here's my stitch marker to show the right side. So I'm going to flip this all inside out. I mean, right side out. <laughs> so now this is the right side of my work. And I have my little stitch markers here to show me that this is the right side. Right there. And then we can start working on the arms. <laughs> 